Hi friends! I'm so happy you're here today because I'll be talking about some books that I've read recently. Um, as per usual, I've read a ton of books this month. I am almost at 20, I think, or I'm over 20. Who knows? <laughs> Anyways, uh, so I'm here to just talk about a couple, so my wrap-up is it like insanely long uh and i'm sorry for my voice or if i sniffle or anything like that uh i have a bit of uh, a cold right now uh but overall i'm feeling fine i just thought i would film this in case stuff does get worse uh so starting off with how to sell a haunted house by grady hendrix this just came out uh last tuesday January 17th and of course I had it pre-ordered. It's one of my most anticipated reads of the year and it did not let me down. This is my favorite Grady Hendrix of all time. Um, I've only read seven of his books but this is number one as of now. Uh, I think he really honed in on um, like the family theme and he executed it perfectly. Uh, uh, Everybody's arc in this is so great, um, and well, the two main characters, I guess, arc is fantastic in it, uh, and yeah, I think it was so well executed, uh, and also, I'm totally biased because of creepy dolls and puppets, of course, uh, but he did that, did the 80s cheesiness theme with that, uh, but it just it just flowed together so well. It just was a very compelling story. I love the main character, uh, Louise, a lot in it, and her brother, Mark, is fantastic character as well. And there's um, another thing that I'm probably biased to in this as well, but it's a bit of a spoiler, so I don't want to get into the detail of it, uh, but uh, if you're curious, <laughs> you can always message me about that particular one if you've read this. Uh, but yeah, it's a fantastic story. It starts off with probably a big trigger for some people. It starts off with like a parent's death. Uh, Louise gets a phone call from her brother that her both her parents have passed away suddenly uh, and so she has to go home for the funeral and like for all the arrangements and reading of the will and stuff uh, and then cleaning out the house that is filled with uh, with creepy dolls and puppets. Uh, her mom uh, ran like a puppetry um, thing for a church uh, and that's all I'm going to say about this one. I really think you should go into this one pretty blind. I think Grady, in his advertising for this book, said a big spoiler. I just listened to, um, I was listening to a podcast and he did a reading on it for this book. Uh, and it's really funny, but he definitely gives away a lot in it. He's like, according to my publisher's lawyers, I have to say if you have previous experiences with creepy dolls or puppets, uh, then you need, you cannot read this book or something like that. Like he gives away a lot in that. And I was cracking up. It was really funny, but he does, he does go into more detail than I even just said now. <laughs> but of course, I gave this five stars. I absolutely love it. I highly suggest checking it out, especially if you are a fan of that genre, of the subgenre um, of dolls and puppets, you'll love it. Uh, and yeah, it had me tearing up in moments. It had me absolutely scared in moments. So it was perfect. It's absolutely perfect. So many emotions. Uh, and I love it. And I hope this gets an adaptation that actually goes to theaters. <laughs> that would be awesome. Uh, but yes, uh, highly, highly suggest How to Sell a Haunted House uh, by Grady Hendrix. Uh, and yeah, um, I love it. It's my new favorite book ever. <laughs> As you guys probably noticed too, I have a little candle here. Uh, we did a little bit of ghost hunting the other day uh, and um, we just had it out and I thought I would just light it for ambiance for my recent reads. <laughs> the next book I'm going to talk about is The Change by Kristen Miller. I really love this book so much. Starting off this reason reads with two amazing reads that I read this month. Uh, this is a witchy mystery book I guess <laughs> that's how I would put it definitely horror uh but I don't know it's it felt like cozy horror in a way uh it's never really scary 
in it. Uh, it's more of a mystery and these women kind of teaming up who are discovering changes about themselves and using their power, new powers to solve a mystery um, of these murders. Uh, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. Uh, there is a very, very great character in this book in this book also needs sh it needs a show for sure like at least um six episodes minimum <laughs> uh i loved the uh mystery of this i feel like i've already said that but it was it, so engaging and the dialogue was very funny it was down to earth uh and it was amazing and i don't know what else to say without giving stuff away in it uh, but if you like practical magic, um, you'll probably like this one a lot. So switching gears a bit, I listened to a fun little middle middle grade book from Libby called Manicula. Uh, this is about a vampire bunny. <laughs> uh, and I read the first book in this uh, series and it was so much fun. It takes, um, it's the POV of the dog and the cat and then this new bunny uh, is brought home and <laughs> I just had a blast with it. It was so so cute. Uh, so the dog and the cat I kind of have to team up uh, to figure out what is up with his bunny and he's he he's like Marceline I guess from Adventureland like the type of vampire uh, without totally explaining what and how it works uh, but it was just so cute it was a nice little like break from some heavier books I think I did read this right after the change uh, because I was just like so amped up and I was like I need like something a little less intense and uh, yeah so I ended up listening to this it's a very quick list and I think it's a hundred pages or so uh, and I gave it four stars I really enjoyed it sorry if it looks a little different my camera my battery died. Story of my life, right? Uh, but the next book I ended up listening to on Libby as well was Killers of a Certain Age by Deanna Rayborn. Uh, this is another <laughs> feminist type of book, I guess. Uh, similar to The Change, this is about a group of women that team up. Uh, but these are assassins and they're older and the company they work for has a hit out for them so they have to team up to figure out why does the company want them dead. Uh, and I did really like this but I felt like it ended up dragging in the middle because there's dual timelines which really worked at the beginning but at the end of it uh, or toward in middle towards the end I was just like I don't I don't need to go back in time again <laughs> we've been back so much uh, but I did really like it I thought it was pretty funny the action was actually really well written and this is the author of um, oh gosh I forget the series name I'm gonna have to put it here but um, I've been meaning to pick up this series as well I think it's like a mystery series uh, but yeah I ended up really enjoying it and I gave it 3.5 stars the next book I ended up reading was Cannibal Nuns from Outer Space by Duncan P. Bradshaw uh, I read this on KU and it was a blast it was a lot of fun um, this really reminded me of um hell baby if you guys are familiar with that horror comedy uh this leans so far into hell i feel like this is this is the premise of hell baby at the beginning uh so we follow this priest and uh he's doing an exorcism and it's just hilarious and it was so funny right off the bat uh and it just it just kept going until we get to the cannibal nuns from space <laughs> it was there's a really funny part too like before we even get to the cannibal nuns part um where the priest is trying to debunk like a a crying virgin mary statue like with the blood tears and he straight up like shoots a nun like in the foot or something or in the leg like interrogating her and it was so funny i i was like laugh crying because <laughs> and then like the other priest is like dude like you gotta calm down like it was hilarious uh but it did drag a bit <laughs> we'll say that we get this guy's whole whole backstory uh and I was like I don't really need this whole backstory even to the point where the priest was like that's kind of, that's bs like you just lied to me like you're lying to me um so I felt like that was we didn't need that uh it would have moved a lot faster we would have gotten to the cannibal nuns quicker uh I would have liked that but what I did really like about this is that they explain the cannibal nuns 
where these cannibal nuns come from um and stuff and i really liked that and you get the cannibal nuns side you get their povs you get them talking to each other it's really funny uh but overall super fun time i give it three stars and i highly suggest checking this one out if you're looking for a fun uh comedy horror for sure next book i ended up listening to undescribed was the last invitation by darby kane this is a thriller book about <laughs> this is this is pretty funny uh, this is about um a group of women <laughs> who run a society uh where they vote on choosing which powerful man to kill every week uh <laughs> i don't know why i'm laughing i'm like i read these like these three books like all in the same time period uh so i thought that was really funny but i read this for sav's book club pick uh lights out that she hosted with lexi uh for december i read it like the day of or right before the live show uh and it's a very quick listen if you need something to listen to that you don't really want to pay attention to <laughs> I suggest this one. Uh, so we follow like two women and um, I don't really, really want to talk about this book honestly because it was very very boring uh, and I wanted more of like the society uh, of women killers. It was it was so boring for it even having like that theme of it. I don't know. Uh, I ended up giving it, I actually gave it two stars, but I'm thinking like 1.5, but it doesn't matter because I gave it two stars on Goodreads anyways. Um, eh, eh. I might skip the if you, yeah I would skip this one honestly. Next book I listened to on Scribd was The Moon of the Crested Snow by Wibagashig Rice and I meant to read this for Christmas Evil but that didn't happen <laughs> for wintry setting uh but this is a super super wintry setting. Uh this book takes place in very northern Canada and it takes place on a reservation uh that is cut off from the city from I think it's Toronto is it Toronto um I forget which Canadian city it's it's cut off from uh that it was close it was even closest to uh but it is like it's cut off uh so they are usually used to this after a big storm uh, big snowstorm uh but it just keeps going like they just don't hear from anybody uh for weeks uh and then they start to worry and then outsiders from the city start showing up uh and boy oh boy the tension in this was done magnificently it reminded me of the auctioneer actually like with that um that dude showing up in that town uh and then just being like awful that is um kind of what happens in this uh it's pretty hor horrific towards the end i feel like it got pretty scary uh but what happens in the end of this i really wanted throughout I wanted a little bit more from that uh and it was like really sad and like a bummer too like of stuff that happened in this um but yeah I wish it it focused more on like what happens at the end a little bit more in the story so I ended up giving it four stars highly suggest checking this out I can't wait to read I think of the second book in this series I think this is a series uh and that would be really cool because this is only 200 pages and, and I really enjoyed it and I gave it four stars uh so yeah I'm looking forward to reading more the next book I ended up reading on Kindle Unlimited was White Ibis by Wendy Darmaple I read this for Kelly Hooked on Books Indie Book Club uh for uh, January uh, and I'll link her channel down below so you can go and check out she runs two book clubs awesome book clubs uh, and yeah I had a lot of fun with the white ibis uh, I liked Wendy Dar I think I've read one of her books the people in the water or something it's part of her Florida gothic series uh, and I cannot wait to read her other novellas from this um, so this is about a girl that you don't like. She's very materialistic. She hates her job. She kind of hates her boyfriend. Uh, she's going to break up with him or whatever. And he, yeah, it's like a whole thing. She's a lot. And she ends up meeting this girl at yoga and they become fast friends. That leads to a trip to New Orleans. And that is all I'm going to say about this. There is a white ibis uh, kind of hovering around at the beginning. And um, yeah, that's all I could say about this one. <laughs> Um, I do wish we got like a little bit more um, when they were in 
New Orleans. I just thought that would have been cool, but it would have been longer if uh, she did that. So I totally get why uh, what was chosen, what was chosen, and how how this uh, was written. <laughs> what was chosen? What? What? Uh, <laughs> the ending is fantastic uh other than there's something else that happens at the ending that's supposed to be like a twist i guess um that i feel like it wasn't really needed i think i got the gist of it without that extra little hint uh, of it so i ended up giving it 3.5 stars and of course i rounded up to four on goodreads and the last book i'm going to talk about is house of hollow by crystal sutherland i just listened to this pretty recently i listened to this um oh geez um <laughs> the other day <laughs> wow my brain's not working uh this is a YA horror book uh and this starts off really good I like the mystery of it uh I liked the true crime connections to this uh this has a uh, like summertime summertime man vibes which was actually solved recently uh which is really cool uh but <laughs> This lost me, honestly. This took a very Neil Gaiman turn. Like, there's like a secret door in London. Okay, that's probably a spoiler, but <laughs> it happens in this and it totally lost me. It had very beautiful imagery in it, um, but overall, I gave it three stars. Uh, the characters were pretty bland to me, uh, but it started off really, really strong. Um, I was thinking of Neon Demon a little bit at the beginning of this. Uh, but yeah, it takes like a very crazy turn. Uh, and yeah, uh, I guess if you like creepy imagery, if you're into like a little bit of a mystery, uh, you can check it out or like fairy tale stuff because what happens in this is like very f like dark fairy tale-esque. Uh, but yeah, this is about a girl who uh sister goes missing uh and actually they both went missing like when they were kids so it's like they have to figure out why did they go missing when they were kids um and like figure out like what their parents know and stuff and it ends up being like this whole thing um <laughs> but yeah the great cover and on it this does happen in the book which is really cool because sometimes i feel like covers will be like that doesn't happen in the book <laughs> uh but yeah overall i gave it three stars um I enjoyed it, but it did kind of lose me towards the middle a little bit. <laughs> so there you have it. Those are some recent reads. Let me know what have you been reading in January. And I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.